Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for December 8th, 2020, Tuesday, 3 p.m. Eastern. Just let everybody know I'm going to be uh, having a I Hercules call, uh, just kind of cover some things uh, for everybody. Uh, we'll probably do that, let's see, uh, I'll cover, probably cover some of it in the uh, TFCC, and then we'll have one most likely Friday at, uh, Let's see, 9 p.m. Eastern on Friday. And that'll just be exclusively about the I Hercules and answer any questions and get things uh, because it's uh, it's a very, it's becoming very popular. Obviously, it's the only reverse aging um, formula that is currently available for the public in a, in a tremendously affordable way. So <clears throat> just so you put that down, I'll have it uh, Friday at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern. And and then I'll cover some things on the TFCC for tomorrow night. One of the biggest things that we have right now uh, and we always have had is to be free from your worried mind. It's to choose to practice burning up your ego uh, in the fire of pure awareness. And you watch how the ego thinks it's in control. Always seeking more love, more power, connection, abundance, and freedom. And it's never enough. Ever, ever enough. Never enough. And there is a power that's much, much, much greater uh, than you that is already taking care of everything. And, and the key to this is to trust in that. You know, a lot of us will trust, but we don't trust totally. We don't, with complete faith, that we trust 100% is to let your ego take a rest right in the now. Take a break from perpetually achieving, fixing, and improving yourself. Just be okay with who you are because you are more than enough. You are perfect. Perfect and imperfect. Perfect and imperfect. Just as we all are. And this understanding creates a certain mastery over the ego and liberates, liberated the mind. It liberates the mind. Don't let your mind place you in any prisons because the mind tends to make us into slaves when we are continually following the ego's seriousness game. Be free from seriousness. Be sincere about enjoying this precious life instead. And you can choose, each of us can choose to be happy at any moment. You just let go and let everything in your entire life be as it is. And the ecstatic universe will flow through you and move you forward in life joyously. You just we all choose. We either choose or we don't choose. We just make time to put away our phone for the weekend. Put away your phone for the weekend. Boy, that's a toughie, isn't it? Um, some of us can do that. It just depends. Obviously, in my case, that's not uh, something I can do. But I can leave it away for a bit uh, late at night. Uh, so... Don't touch it. Like if you're if you're able to do this, don't touch it. Sit in nature and do nothing, and be rooted in stillness. 
See, a lot of us will get guilty about that. We feel guilty. I'm not doing anything. I should be doing something. I'm lazy because I'm not doing anything. And that's just not the case. Uh, you, you sit in nature and do nothing. Be rooted in stillness. Get away from the, uh, the, the, the TV, the, uh, the radio, the, 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 the Internet. And just sit in nature and do nothing. Meditate on pure awareness as much as you possibly can. And don't let thoughts take over you. Watch them vigilantly. But don't let them take you over. Transcend this. It's a cyclone of egoic thoughts. So be free from this serious mind. It is the greatest accomplishment there is to be free from the serious mind, your mind, each and every one of us. And you, 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 you love your ego. You don't hate it. You don't dis, you know, uh, but you know how to master it. And that's what this is all about. It is the mastering of the ego. It becomes your friend rather than, well, an enemy, so to speak. It really is an enemy. <clears throat> the wind cannot shake a mountain. Neither praise nor blame moves the wise man. And that's the Buddha, Dhammapada. One of the greatest experiences mankind, a mankind being, can have is the feeling of unbounded freedom. Unbounded. Being totally wild and absolutely free means there is nothing holding any of us back. We are fully self-expressed, letting it all hang out, exploring every dimension, direction, and quality of our being good and bad judgments from our minds and others no longer have any weight or meaning. You've simply become a fully authentic individual who is total in your creative expression and who has stopped allowing the mind to dictate your experience of this life in any way. You know you are completely free when you start feeling like a child again. You know you get that feeling when you were younger? And a lot of us go, why am I having that feeling? You just kind of go with it. You start feeling like a child again. Unpretentious, uninhibited, full of curiosity, spontaneous laughter, playfulness, innocence, and are totally unguarded. You feel safe and protected in each moment at the time, at the same time knowing this life is the greatest adventure of them all. Now the child within you, is always having fun, is in a continuous exploration of life, learning from every little experience the world has to offer, feeling the desire to dive down and explore the deepest, darkest trench of your past or climb the highest peak in consciousness you can fathom. It doesn't matter. It's the freedom that is important in this adventure. The freedom to choose the experience you want to have and immerse yourself into it fully. When freedom is ignited in your life, it becomes a natural daily occurrence to let your hair down, laugh ferociously out loud, and dance naked under the palm trees. By getting in touch with this wild, childlike playfulness inside, you stretch your imagination of what's possible with your life and you realize you can do nothing 
anything that you set your heart upon doing. Radical freedom is, as, is, is an easy task by any means to find. It's not. It's, it's not an easy task by any means to find. It takes your full total being to give yourself to it. This total devotion, total surrender, total giving of yourself to yourself is what leads you to revealing one of the greatest secrets to becoming the master of manifesting your destiny. On this great inner journey, inner, great inner journey towards absolute freedom is good to know about the three types of freedom you'll discover. The first two freedoms are created from something or for something. They are both dependent on things or thoughts outside of you to manifest an inner state of freedom on the inside. These fleeting, freeing feelings are obtained by an efforting approach and not organically revealed. So the first, you find them from escaping from some form of prison, either emotional, mental, or physical. And the second, you find, from the reaching for an end result or achieving some desired goal. Both of these first two freedoms will come and go like the weather. They are limited, time-bound experiences and not what absolute freedom is truly about. The only thing that is real in this universe is that which does not change. That is the only thing that's real in this universe is that which does not change. This is the third type of freedom, which has no outer cause, which it manifests from. The only cause that this freedom blossoms from is the pure heart of devotion to the divine being each and every one of us truly are. The inherent recognition that you are an infinite, sacred, unyielding spiritual presence who is beyond form and formlessness. The moment you surrender to the source of this infinite creative energy inside you, this real freedom is found. When you realize each of us in our own way, when we realize our true nature is infinite, has no real cause, and cannot ever be blocked, stopped, or contained, something magical happens inside. You find it's pointless to continue trying to pursue the first two freedoms. You already have found a freedom which cannot be matched or compared to on any level. So you simply rest in that. It is the immaculate essence of your being, the central truth of what and who you really are. And it is so exquisite and instantly healing. Best of all, it is always available for any of us to experience at any time. And this absolute freedom is not created by any thought that you can think Thus, it can never be destroyed. It's not created by any thought that you can think. Thus, it can never be destroyed. It is found inside your spiritual nature, the deepest place inside you, which is always at ease, deeply quiet, relaxed, and surrendered with what is. The spiritual essence of your being is radical. It is open to all experiences in this life. It's willing to explore anything and everything. And this is something that does not change. This eternal blank canvas of your being is always here, unguarded, and always available for you to experience at any time. The first two freedoms can only create more desire and yearning for more freedom. So explore them as long as you need to until you are exhausted. Then devote your time to exploring the third freedom, which is permanent and everlasting. 
The third freedom is only found from relaxing with what is. Having a profound acceptance with this life simply opens you up to the multidimensional, all powerful being that each and every one of us already are. From this state, you realize how to manifest, create your reality, move energy into form, anything you desire. At first, you must surrender your efforting ego and get beyond the judgmental, analytical, critical, limiting mind. You must relax deeper than the mind if you wish to find this bliss. You must relax deeper than the mind if you wish to find this bliss. Just start simple. Practice being relaxed as often as you can throughout the day. Become relaxed about everything happening in your life now and whatever happened in your past. With enough digging inside yourselves, you'll reach a deep wellspring of peace. And a sweet calming quality is how you know you've discovered it. Every mankind being has the possibility of becoming enlightened. Everyone has the opinion to experience the third level of freedom at any time along their life journey. They simply have to want it more than anything else. If you want this, you will need to overcome the distractions and obstacles in your mind. Those ideas, compulsions, and desires which pull each and every one of us in every direction except towards this final freedom. Once we step back from our minds, we unlock the door to going beyond every limiting thought we've ever had. The mind is the energetic prison that holds us back from absolute freedom. And when we can step back from it, all our problems are instantly dissolved. The day true freedom becomes the priority of our lives. Then this magical manifesting mindset will be downloaded, installed, and set as the new enlightening software in each of our brains. We will start seeing our world very, very, very differently. We will be realizing that anything is possible and you're not limited at anything, by anything at all, except your imagination. You'll know without a doubt that whatever you focus on is what grows and manifests into your life. You'll see that once you start dwelling on thoughts of limitation, you begin manifesting more limiting experience and obstacles in your path. True inner peace, outer power is generated. True inner peace, outer power is generated. With inner freedom, boundless love is created. Meditate on pure consciousness. Feel the inner peace and the outer power. Then, and only then, you will discover your divinity. So if you will, go to the place where you're not going to be interrupted and I am sure that we all are and the first thing that we care to do is to relax our bodies head to toe inside now only you each of us know what that is we take enough time to understand our bodies inside and out head to toe and we know that we bunch our shoulders We know that we best configure our faces. You can look in the mirror and not know that until you focus on it and you understand that your face is not relaxed. Your shoulders are bunched. Your back is tight. 
you're stressed. Your abdominal area might be taut without you knowing about it. There's certain things about these bodies that we're in that once we start acknowledging and understanding them, then we are able to identify that you have too much tension and stress. Body doesn't enjoy it. You don't enjoy it. So why carry it? Just let it go. You surrender it. You don't hold it. You let it go. You're not going to hold the bird in your hands because it wants to fly. You're going to just let it fly. So you picture a bird you're holding in your hands. Now you either determine you're going to hold that bird forever or you're going to let it go and let it fly free. This is something like your your tensions, your stresses, your fears, your anxieties that the body absorbs. So just like the bird letting it fly free, that's what you do with all these attachments. Let them go. Let them fly free. And you're interested in coming back, are you? So this is when the body will start genuinely relaxing. Not artificially, not superficially, but deeply relax the body. And when we do this, when we've relaxed the body, and we know when we've relaxed the body, because some of you who fall into deep sleep during these meditations, that means the body's really relaxed. Probably the only time of the day we're able to do that. Should tell you something. Eventually, the civilization of this planet will meditate collectively every day, most of the time. So then we move into the now. Now, most people don't know what the now is because they're hardly ever in it. They're usually in the past or the future. The future, they're banging around in the future that doesn't exist trying to figure out what ifs all the time. And then a lot of us will go into the past and we all kind of, we're kind of seduced into the past at times because we have memories and the memories had, oh, wasn't that wonderful? It was a great trip. Oh, that was a good time. Oh, I remember when. And that's great. But some of us will stay there so darn long that will end up taking that past, bringing it into a future that doesn't exist, creating that future from that past, relieving that past in that future. As you talk to a lot of people, there's a lot of people on this planet that figure, they they kind of think that, they feel that they're just going nowhere. They keep, they, they feel like they're just on a wheel and they're just not progressing. That's why. That's absolutely why. So in the now, stills the mind, and it stills the ego, and it stills the subconscious mind. And you move out of the mind in the now. You move out of the mind. You're not focused on tens of thousands of thoughts, mostly which aren't yours, literally lambasting you 24-7. That noise that we all have, Sometimes it gets almost unbearable. Thought after thought after thought after thought. But when we move into the now and we only focus on the moment, the space between heartbeats, that's the beginning of mastering the mind. So only in the now. Focusing always on the now. And a whole different experience will take place. And the mind and the ego and the subconscious will slowly, slowly move into the background. Whatever you're doing, moment to moment, is where your focus is. Could be washing something. 
could be putting on clothes, could be washing your hands and brushing, combing your hair, your teeth. I mean, it could be anything. Only the now. How do you stay in the now? Your breath. Whenever you feel yourself, because we all slip away, we, it's, it's, it's not easy to stay in the now because we're so used to wandering. But when you wander and you just kind of grab onto a thought and it takes you away into the past or the future, then you breathe. You focus on your breathing, your breath. Easy breath in through the nose, easy breath out through the mouth. And your breath is only in the now. It's not the past. There's no such thing as past breath. There's no such thing as future breath. There's only now breath. And when you're focused on the now, and you're focused on your breathing, you will stay in the now. And eventually, you'll practice it so much that most of the time, you'll stay in the now. You'll be in the now. And your breath is divine positive energy. Why is it divine positive energy? Because it's a lot more than breath. We take it for granted. It's a lot more than just breath. It's divine positive energy. It sustains these vessels that houses the kingdom of God within each and every one of us. See this in your heart, mind's motion picture. I mean, you're the director, the producer. You're the choreographer. You're the actor, the actresses. You're everything. It's your show, literally however you design it. So our, as the body is relaxed and we've moved into the now, we focus on the now through our breath. We take our divine positive energy, our breath, and we're seated, relaxed, and we take our divine positive energy, our breath, and we merge it with our God force, love, light energy. And that's our chi, our prana, our key. And we move it all the way to the tops of our heads, right back in the center of our body, all the way up our spine to the top of our heads. Through energy vortexes. Seven wheels of light, chakras, each one different color, each one housing a flower within the center of that flower, a different geometrical shape. These are astral plane, spirit, pure conscious conduits connecting us to all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. They're prime key navigators. And we start with the root chakra, the red wheel of light, the Moladhara. This is your career, money, mindset, and sense of belonging. It represents your foundation and feeling of being in the now. It's at the base of your spine, the tailbone area. Your emotional issues are survival issues such as financial independence, money, and food. Your physical association is your spine, rectum, legs, arms, circulatory system. We move to the orange wheel of light, the sacral chakra, the vatasthana, sexuality and pleasure. This is your connection and ability to accept others and new experiences. It's located in your lower abdomen, about two inches below the navel and two inches in. Your emotional issues are sense of abundance, well-being, pleasure, and sexuality. Your physical association are your reproductive organs, your kidneys, your bowels, and your immune system. Then we move to the golden yellow wheel of light, the solar plexus chakra, the Manapura. This is personal power and ability to channel. This is your ability to be confident and in the flow of your life. Location is in your upper abdomen and the stomach area. Your emotional issues are self-worth, self-confidence, self-esteem. Your physical association 
the central nervous system, pancreas, liver, digestive tract, and skin. And then we move to the emerald green wheel of light, the heart chakra, the anahata, love, relationships, and self-acceptance. It is our ability to love. It's the center of your chest, just above the heart. Your emotional issues are love, joy, and inner peace. Your physical association is your heart, thymus, lower lungs, circulatory system, and immune system. We move to the blue wheel of light, the throat chakra, the Vishuddha, self-expression, our ability to communicate. Located in your throat, well, your emotional issues are communication, self-expression of feelings, the truth, physical association, thyroid, respiratory system, teeth, vocal cords, and then your third eye chakra, your ajna, the indigo wheel of light, intuition, sense of purpose and direction in this life. It is your ability to focus on and see the big picture. Now, some of us will see the forest through the trees, the trees through the forest, or both. Some of us will say, see neither. It's located in your forehead between the eyes. It's also called the brow chakra. Your emotional issues are intuition, imagination, wisdom, ability to think and make decisions. Physical association pituitary gland, eyes and sinuses. And move to the violet wheel of light, the crown chakra, the sahasra, connection to the divine. This is your highest chakra. It represents your ability to be fully connected spiritually. This means that you are one with the God, pure consciousness. It's located at the very top of your head. Your emotional issues are inner and outer beauty your connection to spirituality and pure bliss. Your physical association is your pineal gland, brain and nervous system. Now we've, you've watched this, you've heard my motion picture, your divine positive energy, your breath and your God force, love light energy, all the way to the top of the head. And you hold it briefly. I am light, I am love, I am. You release it over the pineal gland. Pineal gland is like starving for moisture. And it's like a sponge and absorbs all this omnipotently powerful liquid energy. This gland is very important to us while we're in these bodies. It is the gateway to all the particles of existence, to the astral plane, to pure consciousness, to the God and beyond. And your heart, mind, motion picture, see it how you see it. See how you see it. I see it as a green ball, a rosebud, if you will. And when I release this pure liquid energy over it, uh, it just absolutely goes into a full bloom. Full blossom. And it's massive, and it's got different colored petals. It's got a beautiful, beautiful fragrance and shimmering, it sends out total peace, contentment, love, and all the gateways are open. There's no hallways, no doorways, nothing. Everything and everything, yet nothing and nothing. Pure consciousness, connection to the God, to the astral plane, to everything. We are consciously aware that we are of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude. Feel this in your heart minds of the high vibrational frequency that this understanding moves us into. We're also one 
our bodies, our heart, mind, ego, mind, subconscious, God, pure consciousness, higher self, spirit, soul, all one. We're heaven on this earth, literally heaven on this earth. And every step that we take creates paradise. So a planet full of gods in physical form, knowing consciously that they are heaven on earth and knowing consciously that every step they take, they create paradise. And also knowing that when they turn their light outward, that every step of paradise they create, their light saturates all and everything around them with deep eternal love and gratitude. And in your heart minds, you see the liberation of this planet. You see the liberation of all the brothers and sisters of all of the civilization into higher frequencies and harmony of deep eternal love and gratitude. All of us walking, creating paradise, shining our light on each other, continuously learning from each other, embracing one another. Quite a place we've created here. And we continue to do so. We have others with us. We have the archangels, the cherubim, the seraphim, the archetypes. We have ascended masters, Kuan Yin, Maitreya, Buddha, Lakshmi, Ganesh, Gaia, Saint Germain, Sananda Jesus, El Moria, Abundantia, Pell, Thoth, Yahweh, Yeshua, many, many, many more. Now the archangels, they're a civilization that vibrates at a different frequency than we do. We don't see them like we see each other, but we do interact with them quite a lot in this life. But when we do interact with them, it doesn't dawn on us until after we've, we're done interacting with them, and then it just kind of comes out, uh, a little piece of the bliss within us shines forth, outward, and we realize that we just got through communicating with an angel. Because of their vibrational frequency, they can surround us 50, 60,000 or more. Because of their frequency, they can house a small area and a large number. You said that masters, those are those who have mastered ascension into physical form, out of physical form, hold God form, pure consciousness. We have ascended into physical form, mastering physical form creating our experiences so that we can perfect our creation. And we're all teaching each other and we're all constantly learning from each other. We're all interacting with each other because we're all one. So we're compelled to call out to all the other facets, parts of ourselves some we aren't even aware of. We call out to all the light energy beings and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. Only those who are consciously aware that they are of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now, in this meditation of forming the circle of light. And they come in the Google Plexus. One Googleplex fills this universe. They come in the trillions of Googleplexes in every direction, and they are with us now. We call upon all the inhabitants of inner earth, hollow earth, agarth, and beneath earth. Many, many, many civilizations. Only those who are consciously aware that they are of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love 
an oven from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now in this meditation in the forming of the circle of light. The liberation of this planet. They come into billions and they're with us now. We call upon all the galactics, all the off-worlders, all the celestials, only those who are consciously aware that they are of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude and be with us in this now in this meditation and form the circle of life. And we're only familiar with a handful of them. Over a thousand travel through the solar system every day. Trillions travel through the universes every day. And the one that we're barely familiar with, this includes all the levels, all the species of the civilization. And that means the good, the not so good, the bad. Understanding that it's our emotion, it's our vibration, our vibrational frequency and harmonics of deep eternal love and gratitude that affords us this meditation. So we have the Pleiadians, the Syrians, the Andromedans, the Arcturians, the Feline, the Zeta Reticuli, the Nords, the Greys, the Draco, the Reptilian, the Golden Pyramid, the Avion. They've been assisting us in our evolution, enlightenment, ascension, freeing ourselves from our own self-imposed bondage in our own self-imposed slavery. And they come in the billions and they are with us now. We call upon all of our loved ones, all those who have ascended out of body in this lifetime and all lifetimes that we have inhabited. Only those who are consciously aware that they are of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and I'm in from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now in this meditation to form the circle of life. And the liberation of this planet and its civilization. And they come in the billions and they're with us now. And we call upon all the light energy beings who have decided to be housed in the following forms on and above and below this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya, and this now, and this meditation, the forming of the circle of light. Now, we're all familiar with a handful of them, vaguely. And they come in the trillions in shapes, colors, sizes, forms, configurations of which we've never seen before. We have the, the fairies, the elves, the sprites, the gnomes, the dwarves, the trees, the trolls, the elementals, earth, air, water, fire, ether, the mermaid, the dolphin, the whale, the pegasus, the unicorn, the centaur, the minotaur, and many, many, many more. And our harmonics, our vibrational frequency of deep eternal love and gratitude is absolutely what we truly are. And when we discover this, this meditation is eternally reaching, connecting with all of us in everything and everything and nothing and nothing. And they come in the trillions and they're with us now. And we are in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity and humbleness, bliss, joy, peace. tranquility, benevolence, abundance, prosperity, 
and we're all one, and we're all God, and we're all love. And our God force, love, light, energy is in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever, and it continues to intensify, and it continues to expand. We form a massive circle of light around the equator of this planet Earth, Gaia, and this now in this meditation. This is our core essence, pure consciousness, the God. This circle of light is so massive and so brilliant that it grays out the darkness of sacred space. Take over a thousand billion suns in this solar system to even come close to its built its radiance. We flood all of our brothers and sisters, all the civilization of this planet Earth, Gaia Aria. On it, in it, above it, and below it. Saturating, bathing, and flooding all of us head to toe inside now. Eternally with deep, pure, eternal love and gratitude, 24-7, lifting the harmonics, the vibrational frequencies of our very existence into higher existences of deep, eternal love and gratitude, into bliss, joy, peace, full liberation of this planet, a God planet, a paradise flooded with love, light, energy. 24-7. See it in your heart minds. Motion picture. Feel it. Be it. Now we begin to levitate above this planet and as soon as we do, we're met with this massive ocean, this gossamer field of glitter all reflecting all of us gathered in this meditation, all one, all God, all love, and reflecting each other back and forth in split seconds, continuously. We're immediately met with the emerald green flaming healing light of Archangel Raphael. This is a column that reminds all of us that we are the power of healing. We're then met with the violet blue purple flaming light of Archangel Michael. This is the column that reminds us all of our omnipotent power, strength, and resolve. We are then met with the white fire. This is the column that reminds us all that we are imbued from head to toe, inside and out, 24-7 with the God force, love, light, energy of the highest vibrational frequency of deep eternal love and gratitude. It is so powerful that nothing externally can harm, penetrate, break, dissolve. Nothing externally can harm it. We are protected 24-7. Always have been, always will be. But only you, only you, only you have the power that whether consciously or unconsciously, if you decide to lower your vibrational frequency low enough, hatred, anger, revenge, distrust, dishonesty, deception, greed, manipulation, worry, stress, fear. You will lower your vibrational frequencies low enough to create a breach in your white fire armor, just enough to allow the lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies to come flooding in. If you do decide to do this, you are then met with the purple transmuting flame. This is the flame that you can use to transmute all of the lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies into neutral light substance and then send
send them to pure consciousness where they are no more. You're then met with the violet ray. This is the column that reminds us all. You can bring in the violet ray. You can cleanse, purify, harmonize the area where these lower dark matter survival frequencies were. Sealing the breach in your white fire armor. Restoring the harmony of deep eternal love and gratitude. Then we're met with the golden white pink light. This is a column that reminds us all that we are the sun rises and the sun sets. That we are the sun, the sunlight. We are the rain and the rainbows. We are the trees, the forests. We are the soils. We are the oceans, the rivers, the streams, the lakes. We are the sky, the clouds. We are the snow. We're the animals. The minute that you believe that you're separate by viewing a sunset or sunrise or any of this means that you have disconnected yourself from yourself. We, all of us, are everything. We're everything and everything. We continue to levitate above the planet. As we do this, some of us step outside our physical forms if we're carrying physical form and we float effortlessly above them. We come across this massive crystalline light tower. We created it. It's larger than the solar system. In the center of the column, we see this oblong sphere. And in the center of it is this massive, brilliant, golden white, flickering, glittering light that's ascending out waves of warm mist kind of like a golden glitter that penetrates us head to toe inside and out our physical forms with deep eternal love and we feel it because we are it it is a reflection of us of what we truly are and then we have these colored bands around it that are doing the same thing sending out warm waves of mist in gratitude. Always gratitude and well-being and abundance and prosperity and wealth of humbleness, of generosity, kindness and gentleness tranquility and benevolence all waving out and penetrating and saturating us all 24-7 unending, eternal and at the top we designed it so the golden ocean can come cascading down in every direction 360 degrees flooding us all eternally with deep eternal love gratitude 24-7 flooding this entire civilization, this planet inside and out, above and below. In your heart, mind's motion picture, you can see the transformation. You can experience the flooding of deep eternal love and gratitude, the uplifting of this entire civilization into higher and higher frequency, into higher and higher dimension, into higher and higher harmony. This is what's happening. And you know that's what's happening because you can feel it through your heart minds. Golden ocean, we are drops of this golden ocean. We hold the essence of this golden ocean. The golden ocean is the drops, the drops are the ocean. There's no separation. That's the illusion. And then we come upon our meditative sphere. It said center circle. We created this sphere almost three years ago. Almost 1,100 meditations in perpetual motion from all of us on off world, in all universes, in all existences, here for the liberation.
equation of this planet Earth Gaia Arya and this now in this meditation. And this fear floods us all, head to toe, inside and out, eternally. With this deep eternal love and gratitude, it's all a reflection of all of us, of who and what we truly are. It is us becoming fully consciously aware that we are the love and we are the gratitude and we are the vibrational frequency and harmony that's liberating this planet, Earth Gaia Arya. That's why this meditative sphere can be seen, heard, and felt in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond, and forever. And this is why it continues to intensify and it continues to expand. The goal of the spiritual path is to become fully consciousness. This means to explore what is unconscious or hidden from your plain view. Allow whatever you don't want to look at or see within rise to the surface to be seen felt, heard, and loved. Get out a piece of paper and pen and continue writing whatever feelings arise to the surface. Don't stop writing for 30 minutes, even if it's the same words over and over. Continue letting go of whatever is inside you on the paper, releasing it from your conscious mind. I'll join you in the meditation and return to close us out.
deep breath in through the nose. As you breath out through the mouth. Move slowly. If we look beyond our physical existence, we will soon discover the subtle realms and experience the infinite quality of our soul. Take a single glimpse through your heart mind's motion picture into what is beyond this physical 3D world. <clears throat> it will reveal everything you need to know. Let something higher from the beyond enter you. Try it for five seconds at least, 20 times randomly today. Allow yourself to feel the subtle energy inside your physical body. Tune into that emotional and super subtle energy you feel vibrating within your very being. Get curious about what it is like and where it's coming from. Take this with you for the rest of the day into the evening and night, the fall and morning. And we will be back here Wednesday, November 9th, 2020, 3 p.m. Eastern. Continue our global guided meditation call at 9 p.m. Eastern for our TFC.